Welcome back to Psychology of Peace Building. I last week or recently was introducing you to the role of culture with approach to conflict and expectations. I am going to return to uh, my model of escalating destructive, potentially violent conflict to say a little bit more. At the very bottom of the beginning of this, Mo uh, model, you're going to see social learning and cultural spillover theory and hopefully have some sense of what that means. But you also see root expectations. Uh, psychologist Albert Ellis is who I credit with introducing root expectations. Root expectations are the expectations that are deeply embedded in us, perhaps the unconscious, subconscious, unknown part of ourselves, that when they get violated or disappointed, conflict starts. Because we expect certain things. And you know, I'm definitely an expect fairness and justice person. I have a deeply embedded root expectation that life should be fair. I was the older sister with uh, five siblings and I was in charge of ensuring that life was fair for my brothers and my sisters. And I assumed that the world would be that way. And you know, my physics and science and math pretty much reinforced that. But we all know life is not fair. I first had to stand up and defend a younger children from bullies on the playground when I was eight or nine years old. Life is definitely not fair, but my root expectation was strong enough to get me to law school and to become a trial attorney, a, a legal aid attorney who served the poor, who helped you know, the poorest of women, you know, protect their children and themselves from violence in the home. So it's still very much a part of me, even though my, my brain will tell me of all the unfairness in the world, if somebody does something, that is unfair or that I perceive as unfair and unjust, I get upset. You all have these root expectations and it's important to know what they are. It's also important to know what other people's root expectations are. I think most of you have seen some of the negotiations that go on between uh, the head of China and the head of the United States. Uh, and there, Chinese culture very much practices face saving according to your position and authority in the society. So you're not going to be publicly insulting or bringing up an issue that may embarrass. Um, if you are not practicing face saving, you're going to offend. And that's just one example of a cultural variable to be aware of as you do your peace building. Today, I would like to focus on some of the psycho, psychoanalytical uh, defense mechanisms that human beings use, and I'm going to call them, as scholars do, are trained incapacities. What escalate destructive negative conflict? and we've all got trained in capacities. We need to consciously build trained capacities in order to build peace. Um, we all have cognitive and perceptual distortions that go on. I mentioned the self-serving bias where we excuse and forgive ourselves, but condemn the other person. That's one example. I've mentioned denial, where we ignore red flag warnings. We don't want to be aware of what's going on. Justification. Here's another we, uh, I've mentioned excusing. We will minimize our responsibility and our part. We might acknowledge it, but yeah. It's not so bad. While with others, we blame them, we hold them to a higher standard. The most dangerous thing that we do as human beings is we project 
onto others our own weakness and our own inner conflicts and problems. So, you know, I use former President George W. Bush as my example. And some people would say, well, but he's not the current president. This is very old. But, you know, our current president doesn't do what he did. So I need to use him as an example. When he saw in other countries in the Middle East an axis of evil, he and his advisors were actually lying and deceiving Americans about the fact that they were going to war, ignoring international protocols based on lies that one of these countries had weapons of mass destruction. So arguably, we were projecting our own evil onto these countries, and we used it to justify, ex explain our going to war. Very, very dangerous when we do it. You know, when I get angry with someone close to me, and I know that actually I do what I'm angry with them for doing. That's a very risky time for projecting and seeing in the other what actually lies within. So we need to, we need to be working with ourselves to raise awareness, self-awareness, so that we are not doing this to other people. The last thing I want to mention, it's not on my model, but it's very important. Uh, overly simplistic dichotomous thinking creates a lot of escalating destructive conflict in the world today. Us against them, right? You're, you're part of my, and I'm going to talk about this more, I think, next week. You're part of my cultural group, so you're okay, but those other people are bad and evil. You see a lot of that going on. This is overly simplistic, dichotomous thinking, right and wrong, good and bad. We need to work to be peace builders. We need to go beyond this and, you know, practice more complex inclusive thinking, understanding of different perspectives, welcoming dissent and debate so that we can develop our ways of seeing the world and each other. Um, okay, enough for today. Have a good week.